Hey guys, Sean here from s &P and welcome to this presentation. Here I am in the bottom corner so you know what I look like and right now you're probably wondering what am I going to talk about. Well, I'm not here to preach to you about the importance of being healthy because you guys should know that already. I'm also not here to tell you about the best diet, the best exercise, the best foods to eat to get abs because they don't exist. So sorry, sorry if you thought I was going to tell you some quick fixes and fads and stuff because well, that's not what we're about. Um, instead, I'm here just to get you thinking a little bit differently in terms of the concept of being healthy. Um, having abs or looking a certain way or kind of lifting a certain way, they might be cool to have, but it's more than that. It's about being confident in you. It's about being happy um, in yourself and, and then understand that you're on a journey. You're not chasing a destination. Okay, so over the next 30 minutes or so, I'm going to dive into some key principles. I'm going to give you some tips that you can apply to live your healthy health and fitness life. Um, so if you want to find out what any of that means to you personally and how to put that together to move forward over the next three, six months, hop on a call. Just click the link below. Let's have a chat and see if we can hash things out. Okay, moving on. A little bit about me. There I am on the on the left-hand side. I keep wanting, I keep wanting to say right, the left. Uh, we started s &P over 10 years ago and we helped kind of back then it was a bit more athlete orientated we used to work with some high level athletes we worked with um, all of the top magazines writing articles and helping them out um, our team has grown over the years and we then opened up the doors to more of the general population and then over the past three or four years we've been working with a lot of people around the world um, and helping them achieve their their um, healthy way of living that they want to and, and their goals and stuff and it's awesome to see and then finally a little bit about me my whole concept of being healthy changed a few years ago my old man passed away within three months of having cancer and then a year later my four-year-old nephew also passed away so when something like that happens to you you really then question what what is the concept of being healthy you know what does it mean and i kind of concluded that it's about maximizing your life being happy in everything that you do you know kind of whatever that looks like you only get one shot at this life so let's make the most of it and let's be happy in the process so that's enough about me and my team um so what am i going to cover today three main areas the first one is going to be three principles you must understand in your fitness journey to make it long lasting and sustainable the three key the three key principles are no one no one wins a race that they don't want to be in it's okay to be different and stop chasing your highest achievement. The second area that I'm going to dive into is the OPP framework, as we call it, um, which stands for optimize principles and your preferences. So this is where we can really get a bit more specific in terms of your goals and what, what are we looking to do. So we'll dive into that, which is going to be awesome. And then three nuggets for you to take away to maximize your results and a little bit about each one. So enjoying life, set a goal that means something to you and train with intent and purpose. Okay, so those are the three areas that I want to dive into today. First, let's have a little chat about Claire. Claire came to us and she's a mum of three, was, just wasn't happy with how she was looking. You can see in the, the black and white picture how she, how she was um, at the start. She wasn't confident. She felt she wasn't good enough for her family and stuff as a role model. And then she decided to change. And since then, you know, her, her story is amazing. She inspires everyone now, um, her team at work, her kids and stuff. So, yeah, she's come a long way. I, I wouldn't know how much weight, she, you know, kind of she's lost over, over the period, but a fantastic um, in, inspirational mum there. Okay, let's go. The three principles in your health and fitness journey. Number one, no one wins a race they don't want to be in. Okay, so by this we mean never sacrifice the long game tactics for a short term result. So this is stuff like never join a race that you know you're not going to stick with for three, six, nine, twelve months. And this will be, for example, usually people will say on a Monday, I'm going to stop eating bread. I'm going to stop eating cake. I'm going to stop doing this on Monday. But you know that you can't stick with that for a period of time. So you're joining a race, which you know that you're not going to stick with. So you're saying these things because you think that's what you need to get results. Albeit in two or three weeks time, you know, you'll be back eating cake and you'll be back um, eating or doing the things that you said you wouldn't do. So the question is, why start this race in the first place? Because if you stop saying, 
I'm, I'm going to say no to cake. And then you might say, well, I don't, I, I eat cake with my friends. Therefore, I'm not going to eat cake or I'm not going to see my friends. So don't join these races just because you think that's the only way to get results. Only commit to something that you believe is going to go head you in the right direction. Because if you look at cake, for example, if you say, I'm not going to eat cake, cake has no bad intentions. Cake's just some carbs put together quite nicely, depending on who makes it. And let's say, for example, somebody eats a slice of cake, a 500 calorie slice of cake, instead of a 2000 calorie binge. Now, all of a sudden, that cake's not a bad choice because that's better than having that. So you can't, we can't, we can't say things are bad because nothing's bad. You've got to understand the whole concept around it. So when we, so when we talk about joining a race, you got to look at things a little bit differently. Imagine like a bowling alley and you've got your bumpers. Put all the things that you like doing, all the things that you enjoy in your life, put them inside, put them in your lane. All the things that you don't want to do, put them in the outside lanes. So then when you move forwards on, on your journey, if, if you are going to start something which is in the outside lanes, you, sh you should say straight away no, because you know you're not going to stick with it. This could be meal prepping after a certain time. It could be saying no to certain foods and drinks. It could be um exercising six days a week which might seem cool for one week or two weeks but you know six eight eight to ten weeks down the line you might start to get you know you might start to get fed up so never join a race that you don't want to be in because if you're not going to be in it for you know for the long term then what's the point of being in it in the first place and also please note i'm not saying you can eat cake all the time and get results but i am saying you can eat cake and it can be part of your lifestyle okay it's okay to be different group versus personal indexing so now on this concept it's okay to be different we are different in so many many ways you know just look around not just in our bodies in our work in our lifestyle but if you're looking at bodies people are tall they're short they have long bones short bones so everyone is different but this is where it gets a bit you know kind of confusing because we'll see someone doing a um, yoga for example and they're in great shape then all of a sudden you're thinking well i need to do yoga now i need to i need to do that because that person's in great shape or you could you might see someone having a vegan diet and then all of a sudden you think well that's what i need to do because they're in great shape so we start to then build up these behaviors and beliefs in our head that we need to do these things because someone else is doing it same goes for the gym you go into a gym you see someone in great shape doing a certain program or a certain exercise you then start to believe that you need to do these things and then is you know doing this is quite common that you then might do an exercise in the gym you then hurt yourself because it it um maybe it wasn't suited to you but this person's doing it so you believe you need to do it so then you do it and then you hurt yourself so this is where you need to understand that everyone is different and not one size is going to fit everyone not one program is going to fit everyone. Not one diet, you know, not one lifestyle is going to, is going to um, work for you. Everyone's different and we're all going to get different results at certain times doing different things. Okay. So it's okay to be different. Finding what works for you is key here. Not just following a crowd just because. Okay. The third point, stop chasing your highest achievement. Okay. And by this, I mean, think of your highest achievement as, as, the ceiling as like the best shape you're in or the best performance state you're in. Now, all we do in our lives and we do it all the time is all we do is think about that time when you were at, at your peak, whether that was when you were, you know, when you got married or, or, you know, maybe when you went on holiday and you had abs and you were in really good shape. But now all you do is think of that. But what you're forgetting is this was five years ago, five years on, you might have kids, you might have a busy job, you might have more stress. But all we're doing is we're thinking about this highest point. So when we go to the gym, we're thinking, I, I just need to get back to that, that point. I need, to, I need to be better than that point as I was. This then sets you up for a really tough fight because from a goal setting point of view, that then seems so far away that you then might start to join races as in on like the first point that you know you're not going to commit with, but in your head, you believe you need to do that to get to this this goal, which seems so far away, and you never get there because you join a race because you feel you need to commit hard, and then you fall back and you join a race and you fall back again. 
So stop trying to chase that highest high, okay? Understand what season you're in. Understand that life's moved on. You've changed. You've got a more stressful job now. You haven't got as much time on your hands. So another way to look at this. Yes, we want to set goals. And yes, we want to move forwards. But one simple way to look at it is let's look at improving the floor or raising the average or raising the floor. And by this, I mean... So let's look at last week. Last week, you ate five bars of chocolate. Okay, this week, I'm just going to eat four bars. Last week, you exercised once. Okay, this week, I'm going to exercise twice. And those are just simple examples. You could do that for anything, for water, for steps, for, you know, for whatever. Um, just focus on improving on where you were last week. If you can focus on raising that floor over time, you're going to start to move forwards and you're going to start to work towards your goals because that's where we want to get to. But without thinking of trying to get so high, we're just thinking of let's just get better and better and better. Okay? So let's let's focus on stop trying to be the best of the best. Let's just focus on where you are now and what you need to do to move forwards. Okay. Here's another lady, another one of our um, wonderful ladies, Loretta. Um, let's have a quick chat about her. She came to us. Uh, she's she's a mum of two. Again, she, she's got a busy job, and she wasn't happy. She was fed up, and it like uh, Loretta's story is quite funny actually because she took a little bit longer than others, just because it was trying to work out. It was like. It was, for her, it was trying to balance her lifestyle, her work, her stress with the goals that she wanted to achieve. And when she found that, which for her was the energy balance, which was the food in, food out or energy output. And when she balanced that, results skyrocketed. I mean, I think she's, I think it's over a two and a half stone loss. Energy wise, she's awesome. She's inspiring and amazing woman to see now. Okay, the OPP framework. What is the OPP framework? So optimize. What are you optimizing for? Why do you want this? Do you want it? And are you setting a time frame for this? So this is your basic kind of goal setting stuff. You know, what are you trying to achieve and why are you were trying to achieve this? You've got to have a bit of depth to your goals here. You can't just say, I want to lose a little bit of weight because what does that mean? So when you think about goal setting, either think of why you want to do it. Is it is it for your family? Is it for your kids? Is it to have more energy with your kids? You know, what is it for and why are you doing it? Is it more of a like identity role? For me, for example, owning a fitness business and a dad of two, I need to show up as um, a dad being healthy and being strong because I want my kids to do that. And then also as a fitness business owner, I also want um, our clients and stuff to see what we are doing as well so for that to happen i need to eat well i need to do my steps i need to go to the gym and i need to do all these things so is it that that you were looking to achieve and that then becomes your goal and then what is the time frame for this you know are we sitting a period of time we're gonna have some focused work towards achieving this end result so once we know what you you know what you're looking to optimize for then what is the principle for this goal Okay, so this is very simple. If your goal is to lose weight, well, then we need to be in a calorie deficit or create a calorie gap somewhere in energy balance. Um, if your goal is to build muscle, then you probably need to be eating a little bit more food and following a strength training program. And if you want to improve your flexibility, for example, then we need to include some mobility and some stretch and exercise, and you've got to commit to that. So what is the principle for your goal? Now we know what your goal is. We know the underlying principle for that. The last one is your preferences. So this is kind of going back to your bumpers. What do you like doing in your life? What don't you like doing? What do you never want to give up? You know, what makes you happy? You know, you know what do you want to do that you are happy to do day in, day out? It doesn't seem like a chore and everything just seems normal. If you can start to think about those things, these this for me is where you either win it or you lose it. Because when you can dial in your preferences and if you can keep these preferences in as you, as you move forward on your fitness journey, you are going to be able to sustain it time and time again. It, it, you know, it's, it, this isn't something that you're going to go, um, you're going to kind of commit to because you know you're doing all the things that you like. So to wrap that up, when you start to learn about yourself 
um, your your kind of preferences, this is when the magic happens because we know, for example, if my goal is a weight loss goal, then I need to be in a calorie deficit and my preferences are I want to eat cake, I want to drink beer and I want to see my friends maybe twice a week and go out for a meal. Cool. Let's now start to build a plan towards that. <clears throat> so you can see why that just giving some blanket information out or, you know, just like a like a plan here and there, that doesn't work because we need to understand these key principles. Because when you understand about yourself, your preferences, when you understand about you personally, this is when you start to move forwards. This is when you start to get the results that you want to. So our method is always go slow to go fast rather than go fast to go slow, which is the joining the race method. We don't want to do that because we know it's, it isn't going to be consistent. So, Learn about yourself, learn about these key principles, and you will move forwards. Okay? I'm just going to grab some water. My voice is going husky. Okay, that's the OPP wrap up. Learn about yourself, learn how to make those truly long term decisions because that's when the results happen. Okay, meet Julia. So, Julia is a little bit different to the other two girls. She started working with us with a different goal in mind. Julia wanted to gain some weight and gain some strength and muscle. She was a, a marathon runner. I think she'd done like the seven mar the seven big um, kind of races, and you know, she, you know, she was good at it. But deep down, she wasn't happy with the, with the way she looked. But she, she thought she looked a bit skinny and a bit frail, which being a marathon runner is expected because you've got to put the miles in and you've got to commit to it. And she was good at it. I think her fastest time was around the three hour mark or something. So she came to us to gain the confidence back, to get happy with her body again. And it's awesome because, because she was into a training anyway, that wasn't a, that wasn't a barrier for, you know, for Julia, it was a bit more of learn some exercises, let, then let's learn how we can put these into your plan and how you can overload them and start to build some muscle. And when I said to her, you know, you can start eating more food. She was like, that's awesome. So as you can see, she's, um, added added you know you know some nice bit of muscle to her frame and she's confident she's happy i will say she is 50 years old so please don't use that as an excuse and she works hard and you know now she's a different woman okay the three nuggets that i want you to take away on how to maximize your own fitness results okay so enjoy life guys you should have picked this up by now that um life's for living you gotta enjoy your life if you don't enjoy your life then i'm gonna say what's the point too many things too many bad things can happen and you you are like if you're not doing the things you enjoy then you're doing it wrong so avoid fad diets whether this is keto whether it's no eating carbs whether it's not eating after six all those types of things don't do them you don't need to do them there's there's no need for them. Don't cut out any food groups or treats. Um, you know, to get results, you don't have to just eat chicken and broccoli. You don't have to eat the boring foods again and again and again. When we talk about enjoying life, what do we want to do? We want to do things on our terms. Okay, so then it's understanding how we can do the things on our terms. And that might be enjoying the foods that you love. Because why not? Enjoying the things that you do. And if you can figure this out, if you can figure out how to enjoy your life and not to not to overthink the things and commit to things you don't want to, then you are going to be onto a winner. Trust me. This is where you want to be. This is what the health and fitness journey should be about. You enjoying your life. Okay. Number two, set a goal that means something to you. We talked about this with the optimizing. Um, create depth to your goal. You know. Why do you want to have that attachment? Is it for your kids? Is it to have more energy? Is it for yourself? Is it just your time again? Your time to do something for you and have the confidence, you know, to do all the things that you might kind of not had the chance to with the kids coming up and everything. So now is is it your time? You know, is it time to spend more time on you? Um, get support, however that looks. Tell friends, tell family, you know, kind of speak to a coach. Whatever you need, you need that support because you're going to come up against barriers. You're going to come up against people who are going to question why you were doing it. They're going to say, you don't need to do this. You look great. Deep down, you know you need, you know you want to change. So you need to surround yourself with people who are going to support you 
working towards your new goal. And obviously that comes down to the accountability, having those check-ins, having those those goals there, moving forward and working towards your you, you know, working towards your goals. And this is where you need to get, get clarity on what you need to do. So once you know what you want, once you know the principles around it, you know your preferences, you then got to get clarity on a week to week, month to month basis on how you can move forwards. Get feedback and adapt. So after you start your plan, is it working? What do you need to do? What tweaks do you know do you need to make? Is 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 the food right? Is are the exercises right? What are you doing? Make sure there's a feedback loop and then you are getting the feedback and you are adapting and you are moving forward. Okay. So think about your goal, get support, get accountability, and move forwards with it. And lastly, train with intent and purpose. Okay. So you can have a plan, which is cool, but one of the key kind of principles that you need to think about is the progressive overload. How are you how are you kind of progressing week to week? Are you stressing the muscles enough to adapt? Because that is key with you know with any form of strength kind of training plan, you've got to be moving forward, you've got to be progressing. Any aerobic plan, you've got to progress week to week. Your body will adapt to whatever stress is put on it. So that stress needs to be put on it, your body adapts, then you move forwards. Okay. Follow a plan that is designed for you, your body, and your lifestyle. If you can only train maybe kind of one time, you know, once or twice a week, build a plan that is going to work for that period of time. If it's a bit more flexible, cool. Let's use the time. Let's let's try and balance everything together because if we can balance everything together, you're going to live that healthier lifestyle which suits you, and then you know you're gonna you're gonna stick with it. And this is the big one: achieve your goal now, guys. Don't diet for 365 days a year. And I see this all the time. Guys will be like, um, "Yeah, I'm just trying to lose weight. I'm just trying to lose weight." Guys, commit to it now. Take action now. Have a period of time. You might go. Right, for the next 12 to 16 weeks, I'm going to focus on my goal. I'm going to try and get to this point. And then after that, I might chill out for a bit and then I might go again. At least then we're not thinking, I'm just going to, I'll start Monday or I'm in a weight loss plan or um, anything like that. You're going to have some focused time where you're going to get all the support around you. You're going to work hard. You're going to get the result you want. You're going to be happy. Then you can then see where you are down the line. So guys, take action now. Don't wait around. Going back to what we said, um, as I said before, enjoy life. But if you're not happy with where you are now or, or how you're looking or things like that, please take action now because life is too short. Okay. Um, our last one here, Heather. Meet Heather. She came to us after her second child. I think it was wasn't happy with the baby weight that you know that she put on and wanted to get back to more of a healthier mum because she you know she was busy she had two young kids she was up here down there carrying us doing that so she knew she had to start some a bit of strength training and also lose a bit of weight i think she's lost about 16 to 16 to 17 pounds and um, she's over the moon her kids are happy because she's there all the time and she has energy sky high and this just comes because Heather was like, listen, I'm not going to carry on any like anymore with this baby weight. I need to take action now. She did it for herself and amazing. So, yeah, being a mom, inspiring to your kids, inspiring to others, it's awesome to see. So, Heather, well done to you. So, guys, what to do now? I said before, um, if you want to find out what all this means to you and how we can map out your journey or talk about your goals and see how things can work for you, please click the link below. I know we've covered a lot of information here and there's a lot to take in, um, but maybe rewatch it, go over the principles, go over the things you need to start thinking about. Because if you want to get to the healthy body that you, you know, that you dream about or that you think about, take action now, just figure out how to do it. But if you don't want to figure out yourself, click the link below, let's hop on a quick call and let's see whether we can map it out. But otherwise, guys, thanks for listening. Any questions, let me know. See you later.